So we know that Google Chrome is the go-to if you want your web searches to be synced up with your Gmail and YouTube accounts, and that Safari brings iPhone and Mac users the most native internet experience, all while DuckDuckGo promises to put your privacy first. But one challenger aims to offer superior speed, convenience, and privacy compared to the big players, and that's Opera, a web browser you may not have heard of, but already has hundreds of millions of users on a daily basis. So what exactly is Opera? How does it make money? And what's it doing to stand out from the crowd? Here's how it happened. Opera software was founded in 1995 by Norwegian programmers John von Techner and Geir Iversoy. With an understanding of the potential of how far the internet could grow, the pair wanted to create a browser that could be accessed on any device and bring technology closer to our everyday lives. Innovation and simplicity would be top of the agenda. Their first browser was never released publicly, but was showcased at the third international WWW conference in Darmstadt, Germany, with the wider release of version 2.0 coming the following year in 1996. The launch of Opera 5 in December 2000 could be seen as the company's first real venture into the mass market, as the product became free to download and implemented banner ads across its user interface. The software was loaded onto CDs and distributed as freebies alongside millions of computing magazines around the world to help establish its name amongst technophiles everywhere, with the browser using less than 2 megabytes of the user's hard drive. Later updates of Opera 5 included intuitive mouse gestures, like holding down control while scrolling to zoom in, and the option to keep your browsing experience ad-free for the price of $39. The promotional moves clearly paid off, as the browser received 5 million downloads over the course of 2001. In 2005, Opera announced that their latest browser would drop its $1,000 licensing fee for higher education institutions, an offer taken up by universities like Oxford and Harvard. Opera held around a 1% market share, which was significant, but still a long way behind the likes of Internet Explorer and Mozilla Firefox. Opera's business model caught up with its rivals later on in 2005, removing all ads and download fees, generating most of its income through Google, its default search engine. The company was still seeking to provide the most seamless cross-platform browsing experience that would be accessible on as many devices as possible. A port of Opera 8.5 was used to provide the Nintendo DS browser in 2006, while a version of Opera 9 became the built-in internet channel on the Nintendo Wii. And with the rise of smartphones of course came the release of mobile browsers, called Opera Mini and Opera Mobile. At their peak in 2013, Opera had 300 million unique users on smartphones, and a market share of around 10%, which they managed to roughly retain until 2016, when ownership of all Opera's browsers was sold to a Chinese consortium called Golden Brick Capital. The Asian investors paid $600 million for the rights to the browsers, its privacy and performance apps, and the use of the Opera name itself. Opera CEO Lars Boylesen explained his reasoning for accepting the offer. Since around three quarters of the company's revenue came from Opera TV, one of the few assets not sold as part of the deal, he figured that 600 million in exchange for a minority of his profits was good business. What was left of the old Opera was sold off in parts, but reshaped with acquisitions, pivoting to become an advertising and mobile solutions company now called Otello. Iversoy and Techner were no longer part of either project, with the former having passed away in 2006, and the latter having already left the company over management disputes to found Vivaldi, another browser but aimed mainly at tech junkies who want to customise every aspect of their browsing experience. Unsurprisingly, the takeover proved unpopular, with Opera's user base slashing by nearly half immediately after the deal was announced but the company's continued innovation has helped to regain some of the lost ground. These innovations have included Opera Neon, a concept browser designed to demonstrate just how abstract a platform that surfs the web could be, Opera GX, a gaming browser, and Opera Touch, a mobile browser built for the next generation of smartphones. On its flagship browser, the likes of Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, and even Instagram are all integrated into the conveniently placed sidebar, and its built-in 
Login VPN, which hides your location, claims to make Opera one of the most secure browsers available. Plus, thanks to Flow, everything from passwords to reminders can be synchronised across all your devices instantly. Opera became a publicly traded company in July of 2018, raising $115 million of funds in the process. Today, the company continues to make the majority of its revenue from partnerships with Google and Yandex. Yandex is the default search engine for Opera users in Russia, while Google is the preset option everywhere else. Other revenue streams include the small ads that accompany your search results, and smaller licensing deals for its speed dial feature, where a selection of suggested websites is displayed upon opening a new tab. When combined with figures from Opera's standalone news app, the browser attracts a total of 380 million active monthly users, generating revenues well into the hundreds of millions. Not bad for a supposed second string internet platform with just a 2% market share. Opera actually became the oldest mainstream browser available a few years ago when development of Internet Explorer was discontinued in 2016. Whether it can ever really challenge the more established browsers remains to be seen, but there's certainly no shame in losing out when your opponents are Google, Apple and Microsoft. So maybe we'll just have to wait and see. And that's how it happened. Thanks for watching.